Today's video is brought to you by Vincero. You ready? Ready. <laughs> Are you ready? No. Hey, brother, and welcome everyone to another edition of a J versus Ben. Today we're going to find out who knows the most about divination. Can I move my eyebrows more than you? I don't know. Leave your predictions in the comments below. Guys, before we dive on into the quiz, I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Vincero. Guys, it is graduation and Father's Day time of the year, so if you are looking for the perfect gift for your grad or dad, I have just the thing. Vincero makes spectacular watches for both men and women that look super high-end at a totally affordable rate. These things are super high quality. I personally wear one every single day, and I've never found a single scratch on the watch face. And Let's face it, I'm a pretty reckless person. And if you wanna set the gift over the edge just a little bit more, be sure to have the back engraved. I gave these to all my groomsmen as a gift for my wedding and it was a huge hit. Also, right now, they just launched a super cool new collection of sunglasses. Jay and I both wore these all last summer and they are the most comfortable sunglasses I've ever worn. And finally, right now they are running a promotion with 20% off your entire order and free shipping worldwide. You can just go to vincerowatches.com slash scbmay. Again, get 20% off your entire order plus free shipping by going to vincerowatches.com slash scbmay. Link is in the description down below. In case you guys are new to the J versus Ben format, this is how it is going to work. Scott, our oh. editor, say hi, Scott. Hi, everyone. You're supposed to say hi, Scott. Oh, hi, Scott. Well, you can so edit it out later. I'll edit because that's what fine. you do. Yeah, yeah that's it's perfect. Right. It's going to be reading us each of the 15 questions plus three quiz master questions from our Patreon. Yes, and Ben and I will have to answer completely from memory unless we both agree that we have no idea and would like to hear the multiple choice, in which case we can ask Scott, who will then tell us and then we will probably guess wrong. That's usually me. We doing good? We are doing good? I okay. think we're good to go. All right, that's fine. We can chat later as friends. That's right, so we'll think about it. If yeah. time. Question one, who recommends studying divination to Harry? I feel like almost nobody is yeah. my answer. Certainly, because they end uh, up taking it because don't they like randomly like stab subjects on a, Mm. On a parchment, him and Ron decide on the same ones at the end of year two. I will comment further on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to do with your answer? I mean, I just don't want to give anything away. Do, is there like a word that I just said right in here-ish yeah. somewhere? No, I already wrote my answer down ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I got it. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Three, two, one. Percy, said Ron. Oh, it is Percy. It is Percy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dang it. Okay. Because Percy's like one of the few people who's like, oh, it's not a bad thing. Well, he, he suggested, but he's extremely <laughs> unhelpful because he's like, hmm, care of magical creatures is good, but divination might not be bad, or muggle studies. You know what might be good, Harry? Arithmancy. Yeah, you just suggested all of them, all so of them, that was no them. good. It sounds like that was really just a way to deliver all of the topics to the table. It was clever exposition. Yeah. Indeed. Well, I, I don't think even it know about clever exposition. It just was exposition. It, yeah. Well, <laughs> shame, I believe it's Seamus Gorman slash Finnegan who is stabbing at the page at random. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Anyway. I'm going to channel my best Tyler Carlin for this one. Question two. That was a dead, wow, it was like Tyler? he was in the room with us. Yeah, I, it's, he's gonna be proud of that one. Question two, how do you get into the divination classroom in North Tower? Okay, ready? Yeah, three, two, one. Climbing a ladder, a silver ladder to the ceiling. That is incorrect. Really? Both of those, if they're the same. It says that it's through a trap door. Well, it is through a trap door upon which you need a ladder to, to enter. reach. Your iPad is precarious. That it is. <laughs> it's not hooked in. There, there we go. go. Ah, wow. When I say I was sweating. Especially near the flame. I know. <laughs> wow. Wouldn't that be an exciting episode if we caught an iPad on fire? If the iPad fell into the flame and then just disintegrated because I, that's what iPads do. This is a great example of us being more correct than the quiz, I believe. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to go ahead and say that, that it technically doesn't matter because we both either got it or didn't get it. I agree. I agree. Um, but I'm going to say that anyone who knows, knows that there's a ladder that comes down. I agree. Okay. I feel like given the multiple choice, unless yeah. a ladder was one of the wrong answers for multiple choice. 
Also, a trap door uh, feels to me more like a floor device than it does a ceiling device. Yes. Yeah. I guess sure. once you're once you're through the trap door, it becomes a floor device. It's all a matter of perspective, but yeah. you, you don't get into the divination room through the trap floor. Well, I guess yeah, you're, you're yeah. in the divination room. Yeah. <laughs> if you were going up to your attic, you had to pull down the ladder. Would you say like pull down the trap door? No, I would not. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. I would, I would say pull down the ceiling ladder. Exactly. <laughs> okay, you're wrong, quiz master. Well, so here's the good news is that because I've never read Harry Potter, if you guys just say something confidently enough, I will believe you and give you the point. Oh, so, yeah! Uh, well done, points yeah. given. Question three. Complete the name of the divination textbook used at Hogwarts. Unfogging the blank. I'm predicting a correct answer. Yeah, this seems so easy that it feels hard. Yes. Anyway, three, two, one. Fog. Unfogging the fog. You know, it's unfogging the future. My heart sank when you said that. I was like, like it couldn't be. No! Yeah, it's actually a weather class. <laughs> yeah, Meteorology for wizards. Yeah. It's future. Yeah. Well done. Fantastic. Question four. What do the third years study in their first term of divination? I know this one because I've seen the third movie a lot. Okay, and I just yeah. assume it's probably correct. <laughs> well, you know how accurate those movies are. Yeah, he only does it. <laughs> I, I sure don't. <laughs> All right, reading three, two, one. Tea leaves. <laughs> reading tea leaves. That's correct. Yes. I, I went to say ready and then said reading, which was me reading my answer. Right. It's like you were reaching into the future. It's wow. like that. Yeah. It's like that. Just quick, a few moments. Quick question for those watching at home. Please predict down below who wins this episode. Yeah, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. That's what they say. I've been taught that from a seminar, a webinar actually that I took once. And now it is time for the first quiz master question of the game. <gasps> That's right. This question was submitted by Scarlet Thestral and selected by patrons. Wow. Yeah. Question. In Goblet of Fire, which prediction does Ron accurately predict for Harry when they are making up their homework? I do not have multiple choice for you. And I can't convincingly make up any. I know, God, I know this. I so know this. The Goblet Fire, okay. This is like when they're making up dream journal entries. I feel like that's that sounds right. This is my favorite part of editing quizzes is when nobody says anything for really long stretches of time. Oh, is it? Yeah, because then it's just like, all right, and cut all that out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is like, I feel like this is so on the edge of my memory. It's like, okay, what, what happens? What happens to Harry? Basically nothing. It's rather uneventful year for him because yeah. the Goblet of Fire doesn't spit out his name the way that it was supposed to. He's mostly a spectator. And, but, you know, even being a spectator means next to nothing because you can't see any of the tasks mm. except for the dragon. You can see the dragon. That was a good That was a good call. Except mm. in the movie where Harry then flies the dragon away from the stage. Right, probably yeah. leaves. Yeah. It's and like, like <laughs> everyone's sitting there like, huh, okay. It's like, did, did we know the dragon could break free and leave and potentially, like, you know, Burn everyone here mm. on the. To be safer. Yeah, mm. that's not an issue unless dragons can fly. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> did we know that? We did. Mm. We did. Mm hmm. All right, you ready? Uh, uh not in particular. Just, just whatever. All right, three, two, one. Said fight a dragon. I said burns. Uh, the correct answer. So you're both wrong. Oh, oh excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Who's the treasure right. possession? Uh, the correct answer is that he would get stabbed in the back by someone he thought was a friend. Okay, I think that there are more things that he predicts that are accurate. Okay, okay. Yeah. Lay it on me. I'm the point giver. Convince me. I almost I almost want to go to book text here because I think that he predicts two tasks, the betrayal of Mad-Eye Moody and come out worse in a duel, the duel of Voldemort. Right. So he's like, everything he says technically does come to pass. Mm, interesting. Mm, okay. You guys like my drawing, by the way? That was- That's pretty good. Anyway. <laughs> On fire. Ha ha. Yeah, because there's a flame from our candle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get it. Question five. Which member of the Weasley family saw a, I'm gonna say this is a typo. Which member of the Weasley family saw a Grim and died 24 hours later? It says Grin. Is it Grin? I thought it was Grim. It is a Grim. It is in fact a Grim. Okay. Yes. He saw the grim. Someone yes. smiled. Yes. Like, oh, he was oh, walking no. down the street and someone was like, and then he just dropped dead. <laughs> that, was and that was it. Yeah, that was it. Do you know it? I think so. You know, I feel like the tables have now turned now that we're doing the, the trivia 
live streams. Yeah. Where it's like, we, I've been sitting in the driver's seat of having all the answers. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. for a couple weeks Too now. Long. It's been so nice. Yeah. And now I'm like, man, I'm so impressed with every single person who gets the answers right, yeah. like within a split second. Uh, they had the multiple choice. They do have the multiple choice, which is fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple choice answers for this one? Yes. I'll go multiple choice. Okay. okay all let's right. Hear it. Is it A, Ron's Uncle Billius? B, Ron's Grandma Hilda? C, Ron's Auntie Muriel? Or D, Ron's Grandpa Byron? Okay, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Uncle Billius. <laughs> Uncle Billius. I had it written down. Me too. Uh, oh, so it didn't really matter. That People is correct, yes. <laughs> Everyone will know. I was like, was there like Uncle, there's like Sirius has like an Uncle Alphod and Neville's great Uncle Algy. Great Uncle Algy who just gifted him all sorts of gross plants all the time. I wish I had an uncle that gave me gross plants constantly. Do you? It would be interesting. Maybe you could be the uncle who gives my sons gross plants. Would they like that? They'd be like, Uncle Ben gave me this algae. <laughs> poison ivy, a yes. poison ivy plant. Yeah. Look what it does. <laughs> ah! What's like the grossest plant you can think to gift? The grossest? Because my fa my thought would be just like a pile of wet leaves or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Does that, does that does qualify that a as a plant? That's not like, like a formal like plant. plant. It's plant adjacent. Yeah, plant adjacent. <laughs> at best, at best. Back in the aquarium world, there were these like banana root underwater plants you could get that were kind of weird looking, but they right. just looked like underwater bananas. Oh. They're mm. small. I feel like some sort of mushroom is going to fall into the... That's like mm. some sort of plants, but... What is the grossest plant you can think of? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Question six, <clears throat> who gives up divination before the end of the school year in Prisoner of Azkaban? That's an easy one. If I'm My saying answer. it's easy, then it's probably like really easy. But if you don't know it, don't feel bad. I'll edit all this out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Hermione. Hermione. Ooh, you put a little heart on it. I did, I did. That's cute. I thought, it was, I thought it'd be fun. Wow. I, I like it. You Adorable. both get a point. Question seven. According to Ron, what is the old divination standby? Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Make it up. Make it up. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. I used an arrow for up, but then I also put up next to it just in case. Oh, it looks like it. cup. Oh, it does. Make it cup? Make that's it not cup. That's no, that's not what I said. I Point said make it up. Judge rule. No, yeah. no, put it back. Put it back. All right, it's back. Okay. Question eight. What kind of diaries do Harry and Ron have to keep for divination homework? Ooh, my voice is giving there. I screamed a lot over the weekend. Oh, really? Just constantly screaming. Yeah, for good or bad reasons. Oh, I mean, just neutral reasons. Neutral reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a sandwich! <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Dream diaries. Dreams. That's correct. With a Z. With a Z. Because, you know, like, you know, dreams, like ZZZ is usually what indicates sleep. It's poetic. It's artistic. I like it. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So, let's see. We're about halfway through. Halfway there. Mm -hmm. So, what better time to introduce a brand new segment to this show that I like to call the halfway half point. This is a bit in the weeds. But I made all the bumpers and stuff for the questions and the scorecards. And when I made them ages ago, somebody had told me that you guys occasionally give half points. So I worked tirelessly to make sure that we could award half points. Are you kidding? At no point have you ever given each other a half point. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so now that I'm in charge, I'm gonna give you a bonus question that is only worth half a point. I'm so delighted by this. <laughs> These truly are okay, unprecedented let's, let's, times. Let's hear it. Did you make this question up? <laughs> I sure did. Wow. And you'll know that because it's not Harry Potter themed at all. Oh, oh it boy. Is. Yes. Uh, Scooby-Doo theme. Of course it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Select all that apply. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yikes. What are the ingredients in a super shaggy sandwich as seen in season one, episode three of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Answers oh A through J, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have so much power. Ham, ketchup, mustard. Am I going too fast? No. Nope. Cheese, lettuce, sardines, marshmallow, fudge, an entire loaf of bread, and a single olive. Please okay. keep in mind that this segment only exists because I want to give you a half point. Fantastic. It is not a hard question. I gotcha. I, I think I'm good. Are you prepared? I'm prepared. Three, two, one. All of it. All of these. It's all of them. Yes. Yes. Half oh. point rewarded. <laughs> Boy, how 
Tony. We did it. We sure did. We did all that writing for a single half point. Yep. You're welcome. Reminds me of 11th grade English. No, you couldn't argue points back with that teacher. No, you could not. Yeah. But I did. <laughs> I was like the most well-behaved kid ever in high school, except in 11th grade English. I remember this class because a lot of the answers on quizzes were like, interpret this poem. And then if you interpreted it differently than the textbook, which seems like interpretation should be, I don't know, open to interpretation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you'd be straight up wrong. Oh, I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, thank you for indulging me. Uh, so now we're going back to the actual quiz. Just kidding, it's time for the second quiz master question. What? What? I debated doing three Scooby-Doo questions, but <laughs> I felt like that was gonna be too much. This is a, a quiz master question submitted by Hunter Elliott and selected by patrons. Thank you, Hunter. Yeah. Question, which Wandwood has the reputation for performing best for Sears? Boy, which howdy. Wandwood has a reputation for performing best for, for Sears. Uh, uh. And that's people who look into the future, I imagine. Mm, yes. Not the outlet. No, not Sears. Sears. Or, you, or you can get yeah. discount vacuums. Yeah, yeah. Right. And lawnmowers and workout equipment and clothing. You need Pretty much anything you want. A one stop shop. I have it at Sears. Right. Unless you need a prediction, then you need to go to the Sears. Right. Yeah. The Probably. Sears department at Sears. I think that's Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> oh, oh! That was so good. Thank you. <laughs> For all of your bathroom predictions. <laughs> There's only so many things that can happen. <laughs> what kind of one? This, this is a real shot in the dark because there are a bazillion kind of wand woods. Yeah. I can only really rule out that it's known woods to the like popular characters. Or if there's any particular type of wood that is like otherwise a somewhat word play on seeing oh. the future. Oh. Oh, that's good. I see what you mean. Yeah, the, the only thing I can think of I have a bad argument for. And I don't even know if it's accurate for my bad argument. Hmm. I don't think this is right, but I can at least defend it. I'll turn, because I think you'll also get it wrong, and I feel okay with this. Okay. Three, two, one. I put snake wood. I put rose wood. I'm interested to hear your defenses of this. <clears throat> okay, so literally the entire thing I was going off of is that Grindelwald is a seer, and his wand has a thorn, and I don't know what types of wood have thorns, so I was going with rosewood. I see, because it's rose. Because it's rose. And roses have thorns. And roses have thorns. Snake wood is what Salazar <clears throat> Slytherin's wand is made out of, but oh. which later is used by a salt sire who has visions about how to make wands by visiting a horned serpent in her dreams. So that was basically it. Excellent answers, both wrong. Thought so. Obviously. You'll love this, because it's very good. It's a uh, silver lime. Silver oh, lime? That doesn't mm -hmm. even sound like a wood. That's a real deep cut Pottermore question. I don't need, I'm gonna have to look up what that is. Yeah. I'm gonna have future wolf. Scott throw a picture <clears throat> on screen. Okay. There you go. Look of, at that. Look silver. at it. Whoa. Isn't it cool? Is it silver? I feel like usually whenever growing up, I thought that things were gonna be a certain way they tended to let me down. Like there weren't nearly as many pencils in Pennsylvania as I was expecting, mm. which was disappointing. Tragic. Like, like truly. Yeah. Mm. Also, there was that time in preschool where someone invited me over to play with crowns <sighs> and I thought they meant shiny objects. Yeah. And what they meant was an old one gallon ice cream bucket full of broken crayons. Uh, mm -hmm. It's crayons, people. To tie it all together, there was also a time when we were kids when our mom was going to take us to a crayon factory in Pennsylvania, got off the exit, couldn't find it, and we were just lost for a while. Is that's, that real? That's real. <laughs> wow, I'm glad I forgot that because that disappointment would crush me to this day. It still crushes me. Maybe I like, repressed this memory. Question nine. Who teaches divination alongside Professor Trelawney in Harry's sixth year? Ready, three, two, one, go! Frenzy! Frenzy! That is correct! The centaur! All right. Trelawney is really not nice about him. No. At all. Mm. Like, I think basically some of the stuff she said, she probably should have been fired. Of her. Hey, maybe don't say too much for future questions. Thank you for warning me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have been known to occasionally do that. Yeah. Question 10. Finish the wording of Trelawney's prophecy. Neither can live while the other blank. I mean, this one's kind of give me a feel. Like I feels like yeah. three, two, yeah. one survives. It's, yeah, it survives. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. Cool. If we if we've been doing Dumbledore's big plan for the past mm -hmm. six weeks 
and did not know the wording to Ooh. that prophecy. I wrote like several paragraphs about that phrase yesterday. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty on top of it right Someone, now. Someone had to take away our credibility card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is like a credit card, but it's used to purchase credibility. But you have to pay it back. So. You have to pay it back, like yeah. monthly payments, installments, yeah. or interest, yeah. mm -hmm. annual APR. It's really annual not a APR, good deal. is that redundant or is APR annual percentage rate? Who cares? This is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> question 11. <clears throat> What is the other new subject Harry takes up in his third year, aside from divination? Oh, this is not a divination question. I know. That's, that's lazy. I'm calling you out, quiz writers. <laughs> I agree. It feels like, boy, there's plenty of questions they could have asked. I really want someone who writes the quizzes to like, tweet us. <sighs> I just Whoever thought, you are. I, yeah, like I would, I would like fangirl so hard. Oh. Be like, you're the quiz master? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what if they left a comment? because comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Wow. That would be so nice. Idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, we have to answer this question. So yeah. three, oh, two, yeah. one. Hair magical creatures. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Question 12. Lavender believes that Professor Trelawney made a prophecy about her pet that came true. But what pet was it? I need a name and an animal, please. Do you know it? Uh, I'm adding letters. <laughs> oh no. Three, two, a rabbit named Binky. Yes, a rabbit Binky. That's correct. Yes. Yay! Oh man. Oh, well Binny first for some reason. Mm. I'm also like, everyone else has their pets at school. What's your pet doing at home? They don't allow them to take rabbits to school. Toads, <sighs> owls, and cats. But Ron mm. has a rat and rats. Someone if it says. rhymes with cats, it's fine. Like rabbits. Mm, rab <laughs> That's not how you spell rabbit. Or owlats. <laughs> oh, owlats. And now time for the third and final quiz master question of the game. How's my announcer voice, by the way? Can oh, I really good. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It feels natural. This question was submitted by Donna Bark and selected by patrons. If you would like to propose your own questions for us to answer, you can do so by going to the quiz master option at our Patreon over at patreon.com slash super Carlin brothers. Link is down below. Question. When reading tea leaves, how many times do you swill the dregs and with what hand? For clarity, it is your own hand, but I need to know which of your own hands. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> your friend's hand. Yeah. Total, total shot in the dark. Don't, yeah. Do you know? I think. Of course you do. I, of course you do. Okay. Three, two, one. I said three and your non-dominant hand. And Ben, you said? Three and what is my non-dominant hand <laughs> left? <laughs> Technically, Ben is correct. It is just your left hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And three times, yeah. Okay. Excellent! Wow. 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 I was gonna I was gonna <laughs> really go after it if I was wrong because of non dominant <laughs> hand. Even well, though it seems like even left hand seems like so like even with divination, it seems like a dumb determination that I have to be with your left hand. Like it would make sense to me that the reason it would be one hand or the other was because of less use. Yeah, well, I like the idea that like the dissociation of your ability to properly use right one of your hands yes. is part of like what would like you're not manipulating it with your conscious mind. Right. Exactly. Yes. Right. Because this is like one of those things. Try to write your name left-handed real quick. So I have bad handwriting no matter what. But these are my differences. Wait, I can see them anyway. But I'm not sure mine's not better. Wait. The top is my left. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Good, 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 good. Yeah. No, it's better. Yeah, your bottom is better. Question 13. What nickname does Professor Trelawney give to Forenzi? This was the thing that I just wanted. Right. And just in case you had said something. Ooh. Oh, the... Um, this makes sense uh, now, because you guys are saying that she was like mean to him, right? Yes, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I was reading through the options and I'm like, these are mean. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, she, she, under our present day HR regulations, she would yeah. 100 be fired. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I feel like she calls him a lot of things, right? I don't know. I would go multiple choice. Okay, I feel like it's like it's a descriptor and then a word. You both, you, you agree multiple yes. choice? All right, sorry, it's the rules. I gotta make sure. Yeah, right. thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Is it A, horse face, B, Four-legged fiend, C, the mule, or D, Dobbin. Man, all of these sound pretty well convincing. Three, two, one. I put mule. I put Dobbin. It is 
Dobbin. Ben gets the point. Is it really? Yeah. I don't know if I've ever even heard that word. Dobbin. What, mm. what is it? Mm. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it it, uh, it sounded familiar to me. But mule was my backup. I thought, it was, I, I thought you said like the interfering mule or something. It, honestly, and that's what I was thinking too, is like, it, I feel like, I think she calls him more than one thing. Question 14. In third year, what does Harry pretend to see in his crystal ball during his divination exam? How much are you writing? I changed a word. Okay, okay. But a lot. It sounds like you're not actually writing now. Correct. Can you draw me a picture of what you think he sees? I'm trying to think like back to what would be happening during this moment. So this is moments before she has her second real prediction that Wormtail is going to basically return to the Dark Lord. I like so I so desperately want to give a hint, but that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah, that's not fair. <clears throat> that's not fair. What would Harry, and probably something that puts Harry in mortal danger, something that she would get excited about in response to. Ready? Three, yes. two, one. I said a hippogriff flying away. I said the Grim attacking him. Uh, I am going to give this point to Jay. Uh, the answer is just Buckbeak. I think that's incorrect, actually. Okay. Uh, it's a hippogriff flying away. He says, I see a hippogriff, and she's all, she does indeed get excited. She's like, oh, oh you're perhaps right. you're seeing the outcome of Hagrid's trial. Is it perhaps writhing on the ground? He's like, writhing no, on. it's flying away. It's fine. Okay. Anyway, it ends up actually happening because okay. of Harry's own involvement. It's a little foreshadowing. Kind of like all the things related to divination in the books. Yeah, basically, if Trelawney says it, it is going to happen. So. Or apparently Ron or Harry. So apparently, maybe she taught him a lot. Maybe. Question 15, the final question. I I've not been keeping score. I think that you're so far ahead that I can't come back. I don't know, you've gotten like two right. I think I've missed. I'm right in it then. Yeah. Plus there's that half point to consider. <sighs> <sighs> question 15. What happens to the divination teacher, Forenzi, at the Battle of Hogwarts? I just listened to the Battle of Hogwarts. I fucking don't particularly remember Forenzi being involved. I know, like all the centaurs from the forest come in and are like... That was mine. That's what I think uh, bow and arrow sounds like. I'll go multiple choice. Okay. <clears throat> okay, is it A, he's killed? Is it B, he's betrayed by his own herd? Is it C, he's injured? Uh, or is it D, he flees to the Forbidden Forest? Okay, I have a guess. All right, me too. All right, three, two, one. Injured. Injured. He's injured. It really, I, I mean, if he was killed, I feel like I would absolutely know. Right, that and would he seem absolutely like... didn't do the other two things. I, I feel like that's just not a very interesting question. I don't think it's a very interesting answer. It's not like he lost a leg or something. Yeah, I just was like gonna injured. ask, because he injured it like an interesting way, because that would have been a better answer. This I, sounds I, like I there's like one sentence where, where Harry's, like, I think Harry's walking through the Great Hall after the first battle has like ceased. Yeah. And it's like, so-and-so was tending to Forenzi in the corner. And like, that's that's it. That's it. Like, it's, it's almost not even trivia. It was a question and we got it right. It was indeed. Yes. Now, how did we do possibly J1? We'll figure it out in post. We Thank will. The edit will reveal all. So maybe you won. I think you did. I think you got me by one point. Maybe Definitely one not by and a, one and a half points. Maybe. Not, not by one and a half points. I debated on putting a single olive as the answer to the <laughs> half point question because like, I just imagine him using these like two huge pieces of bread and being like making a sandwich out of nothing because it seems like that seems almost just as shaggy as. Or it could have been a single olive if he went to take the bite and Scoob just like, scooped it all scoop, out. Scoob the rest mm -hmm. out and he was like left with the that, olive. That yeah. is precisely what happens. Oh, yeah. is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think, hmm, man. Wowzers. I think you meant zoinks. Zoinks. Can you do it, do it. Oh, me? Yeah, do it. Zoinks. Nailed it. So guys, be sure to let us know how you did in the towel section down below because YouTube comments are good for the algorithm. Otherwise, you may have noticed throughout the episode that we have a Carlin Brothers Coffee candle burning right here beside us. We sure do. These candles are now available over at carlinbrotherscoffee.com. We have three flavors, Phoenix Fire, Broomstick Handle, and Lemon Sherbet. If Sherbet you, uh, Lemon. Sherbet Lemon, my apologies. <laughs> Man. People are gonna get there and be like, I am so confused. Yeah, they probably would have thought that. This is not word for word what he said was here. Nope. <laughs>
but they are now available over at carlinbrotherscoffee.com. They are $30 a piece, or you can get all three for $75. A special thank you to Scarlet, Hunter, and Donna for their Patreon Quizmaster questions today, and thank you to all of these other people who are also patrons over at the Super Carlin Brothers Patreon. Yes, thank you to everyone who submitted questions and who then voted on the questions that eventually made it into the quiz. You guys are freaking amazing. It's a hooting and hollering good time, isn't it? It is a hooting and hollering good time. I've been hooting, I have been hollering. All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good answer for a question. Hooting and hollering? No, all of the above. Oh, all of the I hate all of the above. Yeah, one all or none. But I love all of these above. Me too. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future J vs. Ben videos from us. If you want to see our full playlist of J vs. Ben, you can check that out right here. Or if you'd like to see Scott, our wonderful host's new video about Scooby-Doo, you can check out that video right here. But until next time, bye! bye.